Hi, it's Sparkles Watson here. One of my go-to products from Foron Equine is the pre-fuel gel and the refuel gel. I would use these all the time at one day events and at international events. The pre-fuel is an instant energy boost and it's great for supporting the muscle function. So this is all great to use it before they compete. So I usually would give this about an hour before they start competing. And then the refuel, which is great, helps them recover afterwards and it replaces the electrolytes that they've lost. Uh, so basically those two work in conjunction together really well. Listeners, welcome back to a Connolly's Red Mills special. It is the Mill Street Review Show, and I have got a Connolly's Red Mills winner, Sam. Congratulations! Thanks, Nicole. Thanks, Nicole. What's rare is wonderful. It's been a while for for uh, for one of these, so yeah, delighted to be on. Thank you. Um, winner of the four star long format in Mill Street, and actually, we we didn't go into a huge amount of, of detail on the four star long on the preview show, simply because the the Red Mills. Uh, section was the four star which was the nation's cup so we're going to come on to talk about that bit in a moment but first of all four star valley neaty rocket man talk us through your week starting off with the first phase and i guess first of all your expectations going into the week oh uh, well look i mean look it was it was a great week for Ireland. we'll get to that nation's cup and, and an irish win there as well so there was plenty of irish success that we'll we'll get to on the show folks um yeah nicole going into the week look R- rockets he's a he's a 10 year old horse and he is the, the like when I was at Badminton, which was difficult enough with Talisman. I was still part of me was very excited because of um, you know where five stars at. We saw it at Burley as well. The real emphasis on cross country and show jumping because that's that's Rocket. He's one of the. He's actually he was before Mill Street. He was one of the fastest horses in the Eck Ratings database um, already. You know, even when you're giving him. He's he's got four or five four stars under his belt, but even when I was going around my early four star shorts and giving him an education, he was still making times, which is something I've really only seen a horse like Mister Bass uh, of Laura Collett's do. Like that would be one from recent memory where I thought, oh, Laura's just giving him a nice ride around one of his first four stars, and then you're going, oh my god, inside the time, just does it effortlessly. So he was a horse I was I was excited about. Um, bring into to to mill street particularly when i got there and there was a bit of softness in the ground i was thinking okay this this could go quite well this weekend um because you know a, not soft ground isn't every horse's bag um but we got off to a good start as well tracy robinson helps me in the dressage and that is coming and improving all the time i was actually nicole i was actually after six movements i was on about a 29.5 <laughs> Can I tell you a secret? I was commentating on the Nations Cup and um, I didn't actually, hadn't seen the times for the four-star long format. And then all of a sudden I catch out of the corner of the camera shot, somebody that looks like Sam Watson doing some really nice work. Mm. And I'm like, oh, Sam's doing his test. So I'm sort of multitasking with the different screens up and I see your score coming in at sub 30 and I'm desperately trying to concentrate on what I'm talking about. But in reality, hopping up and down inside for you. Yeah, thanks to God. That's cool. It's I, I didn't realize I was stable beside Lucinda Fredericks, uh, uh, Ellie Fredericks's mum, um, three time five star winner, obviously, by the way. Um, but she was going, Oh, because those changes are double marked, they're so expensive. I was like, They're double marked, what? Uh, yes, and of course, yes. Lucinda being, yeah, she's got the eagle eyes, she knew I didn't even know that until after the fact. So, um, the changes are coming. Like he, his first change was clean, but he just ran through the bridle a little bit. So, you know, that was fours and fives. And then his second change was actually nice and soft, but it was late. Uh, so again, fours. Um, and because they're double marks. So that, that moved me back a little bit. But he was, comp- he was kind of mid table. And I knew, bar the fact that Caroline Pamucci, who's just, look, she is the most winning rider at international level in the sport. She, she couldn't be on more of an upward trend. Um, when she, gave herself a little bit of a cushion of a lead on she's the one i thought to myself um and it's funny how the mindset goes you know like i was thinking about winning the class to be honest from 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 the minute i got there uh, i thought that was possible um 
but you've got it. You look, you're just focusing on each phase as it comes. But I, I knew that was possible. Uh, when she put in that test, I thought, look, I'll just have to keep myself within a rail of her um, because it felt like she had a little bit of breathing room. But that the ground just rode way more testing um, on Saturday than everyone thought. They moved, Our cross country started at 8 a.m. So, you know, you still got dew, still mist and fog everywhere, but a lot of dew in the ground and stuff like that. So it did ride really, it rode slow, um, but that doesn't really slow Rocket down. In fact, he the thing that slows Rocket down is me because he wants to go, he thinks he's doing the, the Derby, the Epsom Derby over a mile and a half. He he wants to go really fast and I'm just having to say, whoa, Rocket, steady. Um, I changed his name, Nicole, when we bought him. At the sale, he was called Balinese No Rocket. I was like, I can't have oh. that. I mean, it's, it sounds like he's got no engine or something like that. So I was like, <laughs> so I was like, we'll call him Rocket Man. But then I met Fiona Hickey, his breeder. I said, why was he called No Rocket? And she said, well, every time he he was out of the stable or he was in the stable, I was saying No Rocket, No Rocket. He just kept messing and digging <laughs> and pulling me around. I kept saying, but No Rocket, No Rocket. So we called him Balinese No Rocket because we just kept saying No Rocket. I was like, oh, now that makes sense. I was like, I'd call him Balinese Woe Rocket. Because every time I'm riding, I'm saying, whoa, rocket, whoa, rocket, whoa, rocket. He really, there. I I don't, I can't see a horse with a bigger engine than him in the sport currently. He loves his cross country. He's so game and I, and he's a really good jumper as well. He's an attractive horse as well. So, so like that flat work will come. The rideability needs to come more. He's not, the, the those real galloping horses by a thoroughbred and he's out of a very blood mare. So he's, you know, he's very close to being a full thoroughbred. And they're just weaker in their back. They just it takes them longer to get strong, um, and that's the compromise. So like the cadence in the trots and that kind of stuff. But at the same time, loose jumping this horse as a three or four year old, um, he like he he jump a meter forty, meter forty five course, no problem at all. He's a real. I think he's a real modern horse, modern five star horse, all speed, all jumping. He going cross country, he ended up with, I think, 9.2 time or something. And actually, yes. everybody else was well into double figures. Like the mm. amount of people that I think um, anybody just having a quick look at Reckon Stella thought they'd had 20 penalties because they had 20 time penalties. There were sort of four or five like that. You know, he was mm. country mile, I think, by 20, 25 seconds quicker than everybody else. Um, was there more in there if he hadn't been quite so keen? Yeah, you you sometimes sometimes you listen to these you know people talking about their horse and they're so um, and of course we are biased you know of course, of course even my opinion is going to be biased but um, look I think anyone who saw me th- for the last he was he was where I wanted him for the first seven minutes but I wasn't asking him to go fast I was containing him and just letting him do his thing but letting him roll and he he was exactly I was really happy with that. But for the last three, I had to really slow him down. And for the last minute in particular, I was definitely, I mean, just in the last minute, I was 10, 15 seconds slower because I came out of the last and I said, I cannot, I had to hack home because I said, I'm not letting you off because he just wanted to keep going again. Um, so when he he just learns with the, because he, he, yeah, I, I think I think he's, he's just got to learn to set, to stay settled um he he doesn't get tired like even how he trotted up and stuff like that like it wasn't it wasn't like he was difficult in the last three minutes because he was getting tired and therefore like heavy or anything like that it was because like his desire and and his his ability to run and stay running um was just yeah getting away from him he so i was just having to say mate just come on stay stay concentrating here and i think the last few minutes were a bit downhill as well so he was just um he was just getting so excited there's I mean, I, I think if we got a if we got a, a badminton or burley with a bit of soft ground, where you see, remember, like you remember Sam Griffiths's badminton. I think this, or yeah. even badminton last year, where the fastest time of the day is like like it was there at Mill Street, eight or nine time faults is the fastest time of the day. I think he could go very close to the time, even on a day like that, which is a f- massive statement. Don't don't get me wrong; I'm not saying that lightly, folks, but. That's his real strength, I, and I don't think I'll ever sit on a on an event horse that can do the, the you know that that can still be an event horse that can still show jump um, on the last day and do all that side of it. I don't think I'll sit on an event horse that'll ever have an engine like him um, again. He's he's a pretty rare one. So, what was the feeling going into the show jumping overnight leader? You did have a fence in hand. You didn't have two fences in hand. Um, and I hope you don't mind me asking this, but your last international round at badminton. 
was tough on the final mm-hmm. day. How do you go into the final day in the lead just a few weeks later? And how were you feeling on Saturday night? I probably somewhere between 2014 and 2018, I managed to to park all I think what people will associate as kind of, you know, a normal human feelings of being like, oh God, that you know, Sam's had problems in that phase, it's surely going to be playing on his mind. Um that I would have definitely felt that back back then in those days. But like I'm fortunate enough to to I have a lot of experience, uh, not all of it positive. Um, so plenty of negative experience. But that was the time when I when I learned to be objective about that phase um, and only focus on things that are relevant, focus on things that that matter. So I mean there's really obvious things that help you. I'm on a different horse for starters. Um, but I'd be honest, 10 years ago you're still going, yeah, but, you know, maybe it's me. It's just the show. You know, you, you do, you the, when you're inexperienced, I, th- I think, and maybe even a lack of understanding about how to a- achieve good performance, um, you then worry. And one thing you can't do in this sport is you can't control everything. So, for example, I rode a, a really nice six-year-old around the two-star called Shambo Jack time, and he jumped really well, and I gave him a really nice ride, and he had a fence down. And I was like, oh God, I mean, if I rode that that way and the horse jumped that way around that course five times, I think he jumps clear probably four times. And that was, and you, and you can just have, you know, they, he maybe for a fraction of a second lost his concentration, made tiny misjudgment, whatever. Sometimes you even tap a fence and doesn't even fall. So there's chance at play. There's little factors that you're not fully in control of. You just have to go in and do your job. Um, so don't worry about that. I knew, look, you could have a fence. You could have two fences down um, and, and I could lose the thing. Of course, that can happen, but that's not a useful thing to think about. There's no point thinking about that. There's just thinking about what what can I do? What can I control? Um, with him, it's always rideability because the jumping is very good. And I know I'm going to find him on a few turns and things like that. He's going to get a little bit unruly. Um, he might want to run the fence a little bit. I've got to remember to stay soft and... And just trying to get him as relaxed and soft as possible. But to be honest, Nicole, I was I was pretty relaxed, pretty laid back. Um, but that's because I've I mean, anyone who you just have to go and look back through my championship career. I mean, my world championships in particular, I've had one fantastic world championship with Arda Highlight in 2018. I've had three really tough world championships on the last day. Um, two with Bushman when I was young and green and experienced and, and probably a big part of the reason for the for it going badly myself, but then more recently with Talisman, where just the stadium and the atmosphere, the horse just froze in that in that atmosphere and there was really little I could do. Um so yeah, Badminton with Pretoni, they were they were they were not good scores, but you just have to park it and move on. I think anybody listening to this that has been in a situation where they felt something similar, regardless of the level that things haven't quite gone to plan, actually can take a lot from that in terms of what they can do to control it and actually being able to channel kind of their best selves in that moment. Um, jumping the final fence, the feeling of winning. It was your first win in Mill Street, actually. Sparks mm. was obviously there, but the boys were there as well. Just what does it mean? have another one on the board with him at mill street well, I, I, it's not where i went initially I'll, but uh, but but sinking in all the time you're really happy for the horse that's that's rocket's first international win and we always knew it's i uh, knew when i bought him and i knew throughout his career that this boy was on a longboat and it would be you know that he probably wasn't going to win until he got to um a four star or five star level um and and he could really use his attributes on the on the cross country phase that's just the way the sport is set up um but in theory and reality you know when when you're playing a long game you it's it's fine you can keep justifying to yourself that you know one day it'll happen one day it'll happen so when that day comes and he he gets a nice convincing victory um at, at a at a really special venue for us um that's great so really happy for the horse but um Look, the week that the week that was in it, and um, I have to say, our our TD Neil Mackenzie Hall from New Zealand, he started the week off with a beautiful tribute to Georgie and and beautiful words. The fact that he was using a lot of Maori language as well, and 
um i forget what what the words were off the top of my head but you know love for georgie and and strength and support for jesse were the words he was using but just even saying it in in maori was was amazing and and sort of goose goosebumps and i was stood beside tim in the briefing as well tim price and um he'd have been close to 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 jesse uh, is very close to jesse and was very close th- through that through the you know the three days leading up to mill street starting off so purple and white ribbons were were, were everywhere um love for love for georgie and um and support and strength for jesse and and all of georgie's family was was prevalent throughout the week so when i jumped the last fence and and had one mill street and i could see sparks and the two boys standing there i was so but i was it was it was really poignant it really really was it really brought home um what what were what people in the sport are going through at the moment and in life like in in life in on one sense really honoring and treasuring and loving and celebrating the the wonderful sport and the wonderful people in the sport and the wonderful person that georgie campbell is um and was and and what and what she brought to the sport and how she touched everyone celebrating all that love celebrating all that appreciation celebrating the great moments that we have in the sport as well and then feeling the other side of life, which is which, which can be the can be the loss um, and and the toughness. So both of those emotions were just right there on the surface at that moment, Nicole. And um, yeah, that was it. So it was it was strange, um, but I think really again just healthy. You know, I think it, I think we should all be appreciating our loved ones so much and thinking of Jesse and 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 knowing that we're always going to be there for him and and he's got and he's got to know that as well that we're all there um and yeah hugs are being sent in all directions and and we'll always be there do you know what there was um jesse did the most beautiful kind of post and um for anybody that hasn't read it go and read it take a deep breath before you do so um because it's it's pretty pretty emotional um but at the end of it he he sort of encourages everybody to smile at one another and to kind of I guess so many people have felt so many different ways and actually by Jesse encouraging people to smile at one another actually it it feels like it's opening even more doors within the eventing community and I would just say actually Sam because we recorded the Mill Street preview show and you were about to head out to Mill Street um we've obviously just been talking about kind of the triumph and and the win for you this weekend but actually the feeling within the eventing community has been exceptionally strange and there has been a massive amount of grief you know from people all over the world who who did know Georgie really well who didn't know Georgie you know there's been a real ripple of grief throughout the eventing world Um, and when we spoke last week you know there was such a feeling of we didn't really know what to say and actually you you're right to kind of bring it back to that eventing world and you know people pulling together and they pulled together in Mill Street they'll have pulled together at events all over the world you know wearing the white and the, the purple ribbon and actually you know in Jesse's post which was hugely emotional all about kind of giving a smile to one another and that I feel like actually you know has pulled people even more closely together um, and I would say listeners you know we've had a huge amount of messages from people who either didn't know Georgie well at all um, or who did know her and who took uh, a great deal of comfort from the message that, that we did. And we we really wanted to just, I guess, start the conversation. But I'm, if it's helped you, then I'm really, really, really glad um, because I think everybody in the world has kind of pulled together more than, um, I guess you don't really know what it's going to be like until something as awful as this happens. And and it, it's just mm. horrendous. There was a real... There's a really strong sense of sadness, obviously, um, on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. When I arrived in Mill Street, and it's the first time that I'm seeing other people, you know, for the, for the first, you know, since since the news coming through, um, let alone obviously being at, at an event. And what the emo, the real emotion that that came over the place, and and that I really felt was love. So it was love for Georgie, love for Jesse, love love for everyone, and support for everyone. Um, there's never been you know, no one ever felt guilty when they did a good dressage test or anything like. You know, there's no, there's none, none, none of that. So it's just been sadness and love. I think those, those are the two things. Um, 
that that we're feeling and and those are the two emotions that that uh that have sort of been floating around um and i think the smile is really important because um we've got to be happy too you know we we've we've we've, we've got to work out um how to be happy but the, the 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 two strongest feelings i think have been some days we're feeling sad some moments we're feeling sad some moments um it, it's it's just all about love for 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 the for everyone i think um and and for the sport as well um so look that's 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 where we're at it was always going to be a a strange week of 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 different things going around but we're um we're we're coping and this and the sport is being um as it's 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 a special sport you know it really is special the way it looks after each other i think you can't sum it up better than that actually it is special in the way it does look after each other we talk about eventing family and and you know that can sound a bit cliche but actually it really really is um let's talk about the nation's cup briefly because ireland came out on top on the um nation's cup competition as well came from fifth after dressage they weren't a million miles away after dressage um, but actually added very, very little in terms of their overall team scores in the cross-country phase. I think from dressage, they started on 107.4. They added 0.4 in the jumping, and they finished on 110.2. They gave nothing away this weekend. And um, they, they, to be honest, were, I guess, dominant in the jumping. Mm, they were. They, they were brilliant. It was a really good competition. Like It was really close the whole way. Um, Ireland finished on 110, the US on 113.7, so within a rail, um, and actually the Australia on 114.2 as well, were exactly a rail behind Ireland. So that would have come down to times and all sorts of stuff. They would have been on a tight score had there been a rail there. And then even Britain within a rail of Australia on 118 as well. And New Zealand were in there at the beginning. They actually were, they were leading after jumping. Um, it was just Clark's withdrawal on the on the cross country and a few time penalties and things like that um, was, was the difference there. So really good competition. That was, that was the first thing, but then hugely, you know, hats off to, to Jenny Kuhnler, Patrick Whelan, Ian Cassells, Robbie Kearns. They were brilliant. Um, I saw Jenny's round on Polly Blue Eyes and I thought she was riding the combinations so well, so smart, you know, it was such control, so smooth, so correct. I was like, that's probably she's probably riding too well and and too controlled to be making the time, but you did see the acceleration of Polly Blue Eyes away from the fences, um, just so polite and and so controlled coming back. Then and then then she was like nearly ten seconds inside. I was like, oh my god! I, I thought that was a huge moment for her. I was surprised actually because on the preview show we thought the time was going to be really influential, and actually. Mm. Um, last year that Tim Price's round who won was the quickest with 5.2 or 5.6 time volts. There were 12 inside the time, which I was surprised by. Mm. What was the it, kind of feeling on the ground about that? Well, so they, they changed the start and the finish uh, from Saturday to Sunday because of where the ground had been set. So the first field was the softest field. So the course got... now shortening the course will normally make the time actually even harder because it'd be more intense but because you're taking out fences as well the second last the last the first fence so there are three less jumping efforts um and by sunday as well the ground went from being soft to heavy to just soft in places so actually it's kind of spongy you can you can you you go for you know whereas on on firm ground sometimes you're trying to balance those because you don't want them you don't want them running flat out on firm ground because it's you know it's kind of a bit more jarring and stuff like that so it was actually almost springy ground um to run on and it just flowed like mikey s's courses the the questions are always obvious and and then so well presented like the presentation of the mill street courses like they're fully up to height like they're big the, the courses are big and they're so well presented and they're impressive but that means you can really ride at them because the horses it's so obvious what they're having to jump um that that they're sort of switched on they're concentrating big jumping efforts but you can you can jump it out of a rhythm um so yeah, it, it. I think the four star short probably flowed a little bit more. The four star long, not so much. With a lot of circles and stuff like that, a lot of turnbacks. Um, that would have been a tough time. I think even on good ground, it would have been a tough time. Um, but yeah, look, a combination of drying ground, little few additions, few changes and alterations to the course, um, just to take out some of the worst ground from the day before. Um, it obviously just made it a little bit easier. But also, it was a competitive Nations Cup. Like that was a young team for Ireland, so they were all going for it. 
Um, same with the US, you know, Leslie Law was over and um, they've made a real point of, of bringing some development athletes over to, um, to take on these Nations Cup as they did with Stragom last year as well. They sort of have this little tour of Europe, so they're taking it seriously. They're there to be competitive. And I think the Australians were really um, thinking with it's, it's Olympic year, so you've got to remember that. Like last year, Nations were trying to get a spot. So you had the likes of Belgium, the Netherlands, Italy, Spain, all fighting for the spot. And it was kind of those nations that were taking the Nations Cup really seriously. Now it's some of the nations like Australia and the US um, using these as selection events for the Olympics. So all the individuals are saying, oh, great, I've got to put my best foot forward. I've got to go and win my place uh, for Paris. So I think I think people were were being very competitive as well out there. Let's talk Australia for a second. They took four of the top six individual placings. They led after dressage. They actually only had three in their team. Um, Sammy Birch, unfortunately, Utopia had to withdraw. So they only ended up with three in their team. Um, Chris Burton, shadow man, source of much debate on the preview show between myself and Dee, um, led from the front, finished on 25.7. Um, FOD, uh, beautiful clear show jumping, screws around clear inside the time cross country. Um, felt very Berto S, Sam. Mm. I mean, this was literally rewind the clock, four years, and it was like he's never been away. Yeah, it's it's, um, it's great to have him back. And uh, and and yeah, class is permanent, isn't it? You know, that, that's it is. it's it's incredible actually when you I think it's just because of the, the bit of the gap and the few years she's been away, I think probably the majority of people listening to this show know all about the the Berto um, speed in particular on these four-star shorts, just the amount of horses that he has won four-star shorts with. And and in many, many times, he's been the only person to make the time and things like that, or he's been the fastest time of the day. Um, but he he really is a a very, very clinical and efficient rider around a four-star short. But his dominance here in a big Nations Cup class, um, nearly 60 competitors, and he led with close to a fence, 3.3 uh, was his was his first phase lead. Uh, you know, that's yeah. really dominant. And then he just held it, oh. he FOD'd. He did. Interestingly, actually, I would have said there were a couple of horses that if that went on the first day in the Nations Cup because he was riding as an individual, so he went later on the Friday. Hmm. I feel like there were a few horses on the Thursday that if they had gone on the Friday, there might have been a few more marks in there and it might have been a bit closer. But I would imagine he'd have still been out in front. Hmm. Um, quick yes and no for you. If you were picking the Australian team, as of now, Sam, has he done enough to be selected for you? That's a huge question to ask. Um, I have to be careful about how independent I stay on these calls, Nicole, because obviously you're, you know, with, uh, but we, 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 we can discuss it. I'll discuss it as a human, as a fan, as a Sam, as a, as a fan. Um, and, and I'll also caveat this by saying that I have not studied the Australian form in any depth. So, um, but my instinct would say yes. Um, but it does depend on, you know, they've all done things differently. Like you, you will have Shane Rose, you will have Andrew Hoy. Obviously, Kevin McNabb was there. Bill Levitt was there. So there's, there's plenty of, and actually there was, there's been, um, you know, there's new names emerging or, you know, less well-known names coming up from, from Australia as well. Um, but on, on instinct, you, he reminded us that he is still Chris Burton and the attributes that he had when, you know, he was pushing for world number one and those types of spots. Uh, and winning winning medals that that rider is still there he's got his eye back in he's done it in a short space of time i think he's answered a huge question and that's a very very comprehensive victory in a very competitive field and yes i would say he's he's certainly put his hand up and put himself in a very strong position it, you know because because you're with the team of three nicole you're um every team brings jeopardy you know the even the the british team um, I think they're about a 52% chance of winning a medal. Now, a huge part of that 52% is the gold medal. They are by far the strongest team in the sport right now, the British team. There's no doubt about that. But it's what the three from three format does. It brings a level of jeopardy. So you actually have to include individual medals 
in your calculations i think if you if you have that resource available some some teams might not have an individual medal resource available to them but i think if you do you have to take that chance quite seriously as well and i think berto um and shadow man carry a bit of individual chance as well for a medal so um that's important for the australian medal table and funding and all that type of stuff as well so i think he's working his way in quite strongly I was just doing a quick entry stalk and his next entry, I believe, is in the German National Championships in Le Moulin, where we're going to see them go up against the likes of, obviously, the strong German combinations, but the likes of Laura Collett, London 52, um, Ros and Lordships Graffalo, which listeners, if at any point you thought like me, she was entered in the five star at Le Moulin and thought, oh my God, that's mental. What the hell is going on? Actually, it was a typo on the Lemoulin website. She's entered in the four star all along. Um, but they're going to go up against those kind of combinations. And for me, the Lemoulin result, they're well back in the mix now. The Lemoulin result is key. Um, Shane Rose and Virgil and, you know, Shanae Lowings and Bold Venture and a couple of others are running in a, um, a four star national class over in Australia this coming weekend. Um, and that's going to be a big part of, you know, selection and making sure that there's, you know, names there that are in the mix so i'd say game on for the next couple of weeks well it's one interesting point i'll make because the the vibe and the feeling is definitely around a lot of nations at the moment that there's a lot of you know and this happens in the olympic year you know riders wondering you know where are they in terms of performance how do they compare and and what are they got to do like where they've got to where have they got to be and a lot of that uncertainty because what what can happen in the olympic year is riders can feel like they're just being continually asked to go into the tumble dryer until they make a mistake or until their horse picks up an injury and that the priority is actually just about making a decision easy rather than trying to win a medal in Paris. And so those are two di- very different approaches Like you don't want riders feeling like they're just being forced into making a mistake. You don't want owners to feel like their horse are just being asked to run until they break. And you don't want people to think that that the priority is let's just have the last people standing to pick a team and not actually be concentrated on trying to win a medal in Paris. You want people, you want clarity, transparency, and a plan about, okay, where's my performance now? How does my performance compare to others? And where's my performance need to get to in terms of my experience or the, the horse's experience, its reliability, its dressage performance, its show jumping performance, and its ability to produce um, speed as well on the cross country. So, so cross country time, um, and I mentioned the cross the, the reliability as well. So those kind of strengths and weaknesses. Where I'm, it's it was just a real reminder that you know it's because it's a big part of what equity ratings do, and we we bring that clarity. And there's some nations there that really have that clarity, and there's nations there that don't. And again, it's just it's a reminder. Um, I think it's just something I feel so strongly about. I think like in sport, if you can have a bit of clarity and if you can, it just changes the feeling completely and you're going like, okay, there's the bar and I need to either raise the bar or I'm actually doing pretty well and I just need to maintain the bar. And to be honest, no athlete is going to ever get complacent. No, no athlete ever goes, do you know what? I'm not going to train the horse today because my dressage is really good. They all go, well, my dressage is a 26.5 is where I'm trending. I want to get that to a 26 or a 25 or a 24. I want to catch mickey young or london 52 and if you're mickey young or you're laura collett you're trying to get it down from an 18 to a 70 you know we're always going to keep raising the bar but the the comfort of knowing where we are knowing how we compare and knowing where we need to get to is just massive so again that's what echo ratings is all about and 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 hopefully more and more people are going to use that in their performance I'm sure they will be. Um, I want to flag Andrew Barnett, Go Tosca, also for Australia. They were second after dressage. I do think if they'd have done their dressage on the Friday, they they might have been a little bit closer. Really unlucky rail and um, clear inside the time. That That's a really exciting one to see over on this side of the world. I think the plan is Le Moulin and then Arken. Um, so watch this space there. And I also loved... Um, if we're talking in terms of team selection, right, Yuzu Katajima and Frozen New Mode for Japan were brilliant. They finished uh, on their dressage score to take third, um, moved up from eighth after dressage, added nothing to it. Um, they were very, very good as well. So, yeah, lots to take from the Nations Cup um, in Mill Street. Lots to take from Mill Street generally, I would say. Mm. Um, Sam, before we go, I just wanted to say one thing, because this is a Connolly's Red Mill special. Uh, mm-hmm. Red Mill's really did give rocket wings this week yeah 
They did. They did. They have him fueled to perfection. Um, no, they do. And, and, and the support down there and, um, it's a, it's a, it's a great event as you, as you touched on. It's a real treasure for, for Ireland. And I think for, for Red Mills to give the support that they do, um, to that event and that brilliant Nations Cup, it's what I love about it, Nicole, is that even, you know, we, the year before an Olympic year, we talk about all the time. It's always very well attended and it, and it, it's a great Nations Cup year, but it only comes around once every four years, that pre Olympic year. Um, but even in the Olympic year, because it's Mill Street, because it's so well supported, it, it's a great competition. So I'm really happy for Redmills that they get to be um, a part and, and title sponsors of a great competition like that. And obviously, as a rider, I'm very beneficial that whether the ground is soft and heavy or whether the sun is shining and it's really hot. And actually, there was a little bit of both. So you kind of needed your fuel and you needed your, you needed your pre-fuel and you needed your refuel um, because of the conditions. A little bit like badminton in that sense as well um the horses are you know anyone anyone who's using red mills or forens or even looking after your your horse with carde and martin with all of those products as well um yeah the the horses are well looked after when you're when you're with that team they absolutely are um sam final question where next Hmm. what's the plan for rocket do i ask or do we just watch this space no, I, I'm mulling it over. Like there's things like Aachen, like Burley, possibly even Maryland. There's, you know, or 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 Blair, you know, there's this last Blair. He, he'd do well on the hills, wouldn't he? But it's the same weekend as Lugar. No, it's all in the air, Nicole. And actually, it's one of the first times when I've really felt like I've needed to take a deep breath. Um, we had a bank holiday yesterday, but I had a full born on Sunday night. So I got back from Mill Street and we had a full Sunday. So I had very little sleep, born about 2 a.m., um, so I was looking after all that as well and still doing calls and trying to catch up a little bit on Monday. Now, I've, I feel like we all need a breather. So I'm going to take a week to actually just not even make a plan yet. I'm just going to let it, let the dust settle, enjoy it. Um, you know, Toby's got a riding lesson this afternoon. Uh, we'll go and watch that. Chill out with, chill out with the boys, chill out with Sparks, um, enjoy life and yeah, just just take it all in i think sounds like the perfect plan well done sam thank you and thank you for giving us an insight into to mill street um it's been a real roller coaster listeners over the last week or so um we hope that you're all doing okay and we'll be back with um another episode on the show very soon what have we got coming up this week oh we've got a, a horse of a lifetime show with sarah ennis that's a good one. Horse first, Stella rebound, rocket, another rocket. Oh, wow. Actually. oh wow, that will be yeah. a great show. You need to listen to that one, folks. What what a combination they were. Um, um, so that will be out, and then Shane Rose. When Nicole met Shane Rose. Uh, oh my god! Like, yes, yeah, it's out on uh, provisionally Friday. I think, listeners, there you go. Watch out for that one. He he is one of the great characters in the sport of eventing. That's another my, one. That's worth watching. My Great. That's my week frust- quarter. There you go. You're all set. My only frustration with the Shane Rose podcast was, I mean, it's about an hour long and I could have kept going for another two or three because I felt mm. like I only just scratched the surface. Fascinating, fascinating character, rider. Really, really honest. Very open. Um, well worth a listen, listeners. If eventing did a reality TV show like a I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here or a Big Brother, whatever those type of things are, you'd have to have Shane Rose in there fascinating yeah. and and I lovely mean, man like he's lovely he's not just crazy and wild like he is he's an intelligent thinker about he's a great horseman and he's a great yeah. he's a great person as well um so i can't wait to hear that interview watch this space listeners thank you for tuning in and we'll be back as we say lots more coming up sam on this note though as you have said uh let's all just enjoy time with our families smile be a community be there for one another 100 percent